Don't tell anyone, but the English are making whiskey. Hello, and welcome to the Whiskey Trials. I'm just going to change my background here, and maybe that gives you a clue as to which English distillery I'm going to be talking about this fine evening. Now, anybody that follows my channel will know that I am a Scotch fan. Pretty much all my videos are about Scotch. Um, there's the odd uh, McMira one. McMira's great. Love it. Fantastic. Um, I haven't tried too many whiskies from like around the world. Um, so when this one popped up in my local supermarket on a deal, I thought, why not? Let's give it a bash. And if it's rubbish, I'll bash it on the channel. And here it is. Cotswolds, single malt whiskey. Um, so yeah, let's just bash on, shall we? So touch on the branding a little bit. Looks pretty good. Looks uh it's like a nice wallpaper that you'd find in a, a kind of plushy plushy hotel. Um loads of stuff on this box. Uh nice little bit. It says natural colour, non-chill filtered. Um, it's got uh, a nice little bit about their stills, the the barley, blah blah blah, all very nice. It's got their awards here, World Whiskey Awards, uh, gold category, well done. Um, twenty seventeen Odyssey barley, uh, from Aikman Street Farm, the first ever Cotswold single malt whiskey. Um, first fill barrels, non chill filtered, like I said. So loads of information on here, so that's really great. Uh, 6,200 bottles in this batch, apparently. Yeah, really good. Um, doesn't give you... Doesn't give you any tasting notes, which is fine. All good. Quite like the fact that it, it doesn't, and it gives you a bit of story. Oh, it's got more story on the other side. Uh, about the casks, the surroundings, and, uh, yeah, about the distillery. So, all in all... Pretty decent, although I have to say, guys, I'm definitely leaning towards putting. Let's put some kind of pressure on distilleries not to give us any cardboard. I mean, surely the bottles are just fine. I get that, you know, collectors and people that store it away kind of like the boxes and whatnot. But uh, yeah, in terms of en environment and and doing our bit, and I think uh, I, th I definitely think all distilleries should have the option. Um, to have it, you know, with the box or not, and um, I get it. Like the the supermarkets probably want the boxes as well, but you know maybe supermarkets need to take the lead on there and um, stop putting the putting the boxes out there. Anyway, sidetracked already. Uh, bottle, quite nice. It's uh, heavy based, um, kind of like a a good, nice sturdy whiskey tumbler. And um, yeah, I mean, in general, it's, a, it's an all right kind of bottle. Nothing, nothing too fancy about it, which is all good as well. Um, it's about the contents, right? So, as you can see, I've uh, I've been enjoying this, um, or or have I? I don't want to give it away, but yeah, well, I, I've not not liked it because it's it's almost empty. Um, let's just pour a little dram, shall we? In fact, I'll probably just finish this bottle. Uh, and you may notice... Well, come out, didn't it? You may notice the change of glassware. Well, for this video, I have decided to use the Norlin glass which was very kindly given to me by my friend Callum, thank you very much, for my 40th, 40th birthday. Um, so that was a awesome present, a, a, an awesome surprise and uh, very thoughtful. So here's Callum. Um, so yeah, it would be interesting having the, uh, the doing the nose and the, and the tasting with this one. Um, I've had a little shot of the Norlin glass already and I can see why some, uh, some people might not like it. I know there is some complaints about it. I mean, it's a gorgeous looking thing. Um, just amazing. 
it does pick up your fingerprints really, really well, so the glass gets really smudgy really quickly. Um, if you've got greasy mitts like me. And the the lip, because you've got two bits of glass coming together, it's obviously uh, kind of chunky. But what I found when I first used it was that it's actually really good for, for sipping. Um, it's not, you know, you can you can fairly chuck a, a Glen Cairn back and get a big old gulp. But with this, you're kind of, you, you know, you're, because it's got that thicker lip, you're a little bit um, more delicate with it. So it's definitely a really nice sipping glass. Anywho, let's get straight on with the nose. The nose. Oh, it's nice. Really nice. Getting a big burst of fruits and uh, the uh, yeah, not 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 peppery, not spices so much, but yeah, the 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 sort of floral notes. Getting a lot of floral notes and a lot of fruit, apples, pears, very orchardy. Baking sugar, yeah, ice and sugar kind of sweetness. Very fresh, very floral. Um, you know, feel like there's some kind of pollens in there. And just great. Oh, and I should mention as well, actually, that um, it's at forty six percent. And this is their um, introductory kind of bottling. So nice one. Well done. But it's a, it's a very nice nose. I'm going to say there's like some kind of nuttiness coming through as well. It might be marzipan. It's kind of like the uh, a sweeter note. And it's very sweet on the nose. So uh, maybe like an almondy marzipani kind of thing. And this glass is pretty good for, for nosing as well. Feel all right with the, the thicker... The thicker rim just uh, resting on my lip and getting my nose right in there. Yeah, I think I'm getting some uh, orange peel and stuff on the on the back end there. Slightly more sort of bitter kind of smell. I'm getting a, a nice, nice woody uh, smell. It's not it's not funky. It's not dunnagey. It's not old wood. It's it's kind of nice fresh wood. Something else there though. I could get weird and say that it's like the, the husk on a coconut. You know that? It's the hairy outside shell of a coconut. I don't know why I say that, but there's, this, there's something else there that made that popped into my head. Anywho. Dying. The palette. Dying here. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. First thing that gets you obviously is a uh, is the sweetness that that follows through. I'm getting a lot more of the zestiness, and uh, it's still very floral. There's something very um, like sweet, uh, nectary, floral about it. Very nice combined with that zestiness. Quite sure what it is. It's got it's it's a sweet zest. So maybe it's like a you, know, you get those um, candied. Uh, kind of orange peels or something. Kind of like that. That's followed on by like a really nice oak spice. Where it's, it's light. It's, there's a little bit of pepper, a little bit of heat there. I guess delivered with the uh, 46%. Really loving the balance, I have to say. Very nice indeed. 
moving from that a kind of sweetness to the kind of oaky pepper and then and then finishing really on a slightly more um bitter chocolate dark chocolate uh, kind of note so just a, a lovely transition on this i have to say really really good the echo 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 kind of rattling through this because i realize my videos can be quite long sometimes so what keeps coming back it's quite drying um it's not got the longest uh, finish ever but it's in no way short either yeah definitely got that kind of drying note which is you know some people really enjoy it i i, I do uh, enjoy it on occasion as well it does make you kind of want to just keep on drinking it and take another sip and because it's got such that a nice balance and journey going through it as you're drinking it um you know you don't you don't mind the dryness at the end because the first part of it is so uh, summery and refreshing and yeah, it's just super good. I think the other thing that it lingers is the slight um, bitter chocolate and oak spice sweetness is still there I can still get it on my lips when I'm licking my lips and stuff and it's almost it's quite sticky as well so the there's definitely some nice oils in here but yeah the the, the sweetness is 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 lighter on the finish but what is there is really really nice it's I suppose it's once you've had like a something that's slightly sugar covered how unprofessional of me goodness sake always turn your phone off hearing me okay sorry guys silent so yeah the the the, the sweetness is again i think the the kind of echo is a is is a sort of perfect balance because a little bit of sweetness a little bit of oak spice the journey is fantastic and and uh, that little bit of bitter chocolate as well So I got this for thirty pounds in I think it was Tesco's, and I believe well, let's just have a, a um, quick look at the distillery. Walls Distillery. Let's have a quick look at this uh, their website, and um, because I think it's it's normally around the forty pound mark or something. Think. Uh, let me take you to the browse. Right, here we are in Cotswolds. I don't actually know uh, the Cotswolds accent. Um, it's kind of. I'm not very good at uh, geography and, and sort of smaller places. But I I believe it's kind of it's not North England. It's kind of mid, and it's to the west. I think. So yeah, I don't really know. Yeah, what what the accent is there? I can do a few English accents, but um, not necessarily uh, that one. Okay, Cotswolds whiskey. Excuse me. Um, there it is, right at the top. So thirty nine quid direct from Cotswolds Distillery, and I this is great. Yeah, I've never seen any others up here in in my local supermarkets. Or I mean, it's been a when was I last at a was that. Was that Luvians and Cooper not that long ago? And I didn't spot any Cotswolds. Not to say that it isn't there, because um, there was just so much there. I didn't, I didn't spot it. None of these, like there wasn't like a big range where I was like, oh, like Cotswolds kind of thing. Um, what have they got? Well, okay, very cask peated, nice founder's choice. New make spirit. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, and then they've got some liqueurs as well. Just gonna click on this. Sixty-three point five percent ABV. Oh, it's a five hundred mil. Still, a lot of ABV for your money. 
I, I quite like um, getting new make-off distilleries because uh, it's good for cleaning pipes. And I don't mean... <laughs> I don't mean... Uh, I don't need your drain pipes, I mean uh, tobacco pipes. Awesome. The echo. Echo. Not the echo. No, we've done the echo. So, in summary, would I say that you should go out and buy this? Of course. It's, it is really, really nice whiskey. I mean, this is what uh, the newer distilleries are really getting right for me. And a lot of the older, um, you know, distilleries don't get right because maybe they feel like they've built their brand up or whatever and uh, the the sort of introductory whiskies that they put out just don't make me want to carry on up through the range. They don't make me want to spend the 75, 80, 100, 150 pounds on, on their bottles of whiskey because their initial offering just didn't didn't cut the mustard for me. So I'd, I'd buy more from uh, Cotswolds because well this this one's fantastic it's it's fantastic at 30 I mean 39 non-age statement I'm like yeah that's probably why I've never really looked at it before if it's around that kind of price and in, in the supermarkets Um, but I think at, at 30 quid I mean this is really good whiskey and I think if you put this up against your standard offerings from the supermarket even the age statements, an old Pulteney 12, say, I'll take this all day long. So, should you buy it? Yes. Would I pay £39 for it? <sighs> Knowing what else I can get scotch-wise for £39, not entirely sure. Uh, Potentially, um, if it, I mean, if it was between the 30 and 35 pound, it, it, yeah, probably more often than not, I might, I might pick a bottle up definitely at 30. I mean, it's, it's so worth uh, 30 quid. Uh, and you know, I mean, if you, if, if I, I, I mean, I just compared it to old Pulteney 12 there in terms of like what I'd rather drink and old Pulteney is normally priced at around 32 quid. But I never buy it at that. Uh, the only time I ever buy Old Pulteney 12 is when it's at 25 quid, which it quite often is. And I think it's, you know, I wouldn't pay more than 25 quid for Old Pulteney uh, 12, in, in my opinion. So, yeah, all in all, a, a, a very nice whiskey. Um, and, and, and kudos to Cotswolds. I'm now very interested in trying some of their other offerings. Um, repeated as well. Would be good. Would be good. So yeah, they've got so they've got six six malts out and then they've got their new make and, and two liqueurs. I usually gotta nail the liqueurs for me. I'm not a massive liqueur fan, um, but I do love the, the Aran. The Aran Gold. So can live up to Aaron Gold standards, then it's all right by me. So yeah, again, did you go out and buy it? Absolutely. Could we, uh, as as whiskey lovers, as Scotch lovers, be supporting these guys? Absolutely, because the great thing about uh, English whiskey is it's not governed by the whole Scotch law, as it were. Um, so they can they can experiment. They can do some cool, crazy things like uh, McMira can, and come out with flavors and uh, whiskies that you know can give you some different experiences. And as somebody that is into nosing and tasting their whiskey, that has a an acute sense of smell and taste, that excites me. I, I love um, complex whiskies or whiskies that offer me something new. Uh, a while back, it was it was for me it was the the banana. If anything, if if a, if a distillery could come out with a banana um, smelling and tasting whiskey, then I'd go crazy over it. And I think, um, uh, oh my God, uh, Penderan did come close to something like that. It, it, 
I now associate that kind of banana smell with quite new, new whiskey. Um, but but quite often, it's easier to attain outside of Scotland, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I think there's there's scope for these guys to to do great things. And uh, cheers! Until next time, really enjoyed this. <laughs>